everyone, it's Pastor Ben. I'll be having a great Monday morning so far. Um, honestly, I'm surprised I even remembered that it was Monday. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm going to be super thrown off this whole week by not having church this last Sunday. I'm going to have a hard time remembering what day of the week it is. Um, but Avery and I just wrapped up our first week of trying to stay home as much as possible, and it's been great. Avery's painted a lot of furniture. We've moved a lot of furniture. We've... Do we... We painted a lot of furniture. Um, it's been great. We've been playing games. This whole self-isolation idea is right up our alley. Uh, I don't know what it's been like for you, if this has been great, or if this is way outside your comfort zone staying home this much. But if you have, have had any joy in this, if you've had any great ideas for keeping away cabin fever, go ahead and share that. We'd love to hear about that sort of thing. If you have any needs or prayer requests too, if you're running low on something, if you need something fetched for you, uh, go ahead and send me a message, send me a text. I'd love to help out in any way that I can. We're going to be finishing off the first chapter of Philippians this morning. We're going to just wrap up these uh, first, these last verses uh, here, starting in verse 27. And Paul writes to the church in Philippians. He writes, Whatever happens, conduct yourself in the manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. And this is going to be kind of Paul's thesis statement, if you will, for the entire book of Philippians. Everything he writes after this is going to build off of this idea of conducting ourselves worthy of the gospel of Christ. And so the question I kind of want to ask you right now before we let Paul tell us what it looks like, I want to ask you right now, what does conduct worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ look like? What does that conduct look like? I don't know if you have a journal that you could list it out in or if you could discuss it with someone who's watching this video with you. But what does conduct worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ look like? What behaviors, what habits fall into that category in your mind? Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you, to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him, since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. So again, I don't know what you picture when you think of conduct worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the first thing I kind of want to notice from these verses to kind of guide your thinking and in, in listing that out is that the conduct, context of this conduct is suffering. The church in Philippi here, Paul kind of clues us in that this Philippian church here is suffering in the same way that Paul is suffering. They're experiencing the same persecution that he is experiencing. And so the context of this conduct that Paul is exhorting them towards is suffering. And guys, it's not really that surprising when we act Christ-like during good times. It's not very noticeable. It doesn't really stand out that much. But when we're experiencing times of chaos and, and confusion and suffering like this, then suddenly our Christ-like behavior has an opportunity to shine. It's why as Christians we kind of bizarrely look forward to suffering. It's not that we like pain, that would be weird. It's that because we're free from fear, we can see suffering not as a threat, but as an opportunity. So that's kind of what the context of our conduct should be, is it should be in suffering. The aim of this conduct is unity. The Philippian church it needs to be unified during this time. Paul uh, hopes that they can be sh shown as being one in the spirit during this time of suffering, that their conduct would lead them to be unified. Now, I don't know what you think about when you think about spiritual disciplines and habits. To, I usually think of self-improvement. So they, I, I think of the various habits and practices that make me a better, more Christian version of myself. And those practices have their place, but they're of limited value when I'm the only one who ever experiences their benefit. Conduct worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ should benefit our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, and it should result in unity. And when we change our conduct away from our sinful desires and towards Christ-like behavior, what will result is this unified community that is supernaturally enduring suffering before the entire world. 
That kind of brings me to my last thought. The goal of this unity is evangelism. So the aim of our conduct is unity. The goal of that unity is evangelism. The whole point of the believers staying unified and firm in the midst of this persecution is so that they can show the world that the world is going to be destroyed and that they are the ones who are being saved. And that should be our goal as well in our conduct is not so that we can feel so much better about ourselves or condemn other people. If that's your attitude, then I don't think your conduct will ever really measure up to being worthy of the gospel of Christ. But we should be living examples that living by Christ works. It's better. It's the better way. Living according to our sinful desires almost always results in pain and destructive behavior. But when we live according to Christ, we live according to the way that we were originally meant to live. It doesn't come naturally to us. It's difficult at times. It means that we endure suffering. But that is the ultimate goal of our conduct. And when the world is able to bear witness to us conducting ourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel, then maybe their minds and hearts can be changed towards Christ. So I hope that's kind of your thoughts as you think about what is conduct worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ look like. I hope at some point today you get an opportunity to exhibit conduct worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you recognize those opportunities when you see them. I'm going to be praying for you this week. Uh, We're going to be starting up tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to what we're going to study there. We're actually going to push pause on the book of Philippians per se. And we're gonna turn to Acts chapter 16 and we're gonna look at what the church in Philippi actually looked like, how it got started, who are the people that were in this church that Paul's writing towards. So I'm really excited to study that chapter together tomorrow. So we're gonna be in Acts chapter 16 tomorrow. But let me just close this in prayer and I will see you then. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this opportunity to gather together, uh, to study your word during this time, I pray that you would instill in us a clear idea of what conduct worthy of the gospel of Christ looks like so that we can exhibit that in a way that benefits our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, that results in unity, and that unity will result in evangelism, winning others to be uh, in relationship with you. God, it's in your name that I pray these things. Amen.